Hello my soccer universe, let's also talk a little about the Conference League playoff round and yes it kind of feels wrong for me to wear a different Austrian team but hey the points are also for the Austrian league and so I don't feel quite as bad wearing a Sturmgras jersey for the first time ever and for the first time ever on this channel as well. The games were maybe not as goal filled as in the Europa League, six goals less so it's 21 in eight games and there were a few stinkers in there. But I think all the games involving big names were actually quite interesting. Uh, we almost got two huge upsets. I mean, Ajax basically escaped an upset. Betis got upset. Uh, Frankfurt uh, got too lazy in order to bring it home. So of the teams that I have that were playing in this round, only Stuttgart was fully convincing. And yeah, it's going to be an interesting round coming uh going into the next one for sure but like for the other two review videos that i did this uh week let's look just b before this round so the changes over the winter that happened and we basically see that you know on top not much has changed uh i'll bet this have not been on a good tear in the league so they dropped a little bit Aston Villa also have come down a little bit but so did Fiorentina Lil Ek actually uh getting uh, even closer there as well we saw Fenerbahce rising also a little bit so uh, but basically we still have the names that we would expect with Villa, Fiorentina, Lille and Club Rouge potentially Betis being the top favorites to win it all um, Frankfurt not quite yet because you know tough draw with Union Saint-Germain if they should make it I think they will go into the top three if not um, maybe top four but you know I, I would think the top three favorites because, you know, it's a Bundesliga team. And so if we look now at uh, yesterday's games, Mold against Legia, 3-2 uh, sounds a really, really tight game, but it was a game definitely of two halves because after 25 minutes, there was only one winner, Molde. Gulbranson scored two goals early, early on uh, in the 12th and the 19th, and Casa made, made it even 3-0 seems like Molde are cruising through. However, <laughs> midway through the second half, suddenly Legia scored two goals through Jose and Augustiniak. However, cannot find an equalizer as well. So the game remains finely poised, or the matchup remains finely poised in that one. Uh, another finely poised was Olympiakos against Ferenc Varos, which was not a good game. It uh, was decided on a very late El Cabi goal, a goal in the 83rd minute. I didn't realize that Mendy Libar is now the coach, you know, one who won with Sevilla the Europa League last year is now with Olympiacos. Interesting for sure. Um, early Varga had a goal disallowed for offside in the second minute and then late on Olympiacos wins it. But from what I could uh, tell from the highlights, not a good game like at all. Uh, but good game for sure was uh, Union Saint-Gelas against Frankfurt and it was fully expected because both teams uh, like to play a little bit more open. Uh, it just seems that after 10 minutes the whole thing is gone. Uh, Haibi already in the third, third, third minute put Frankfurt ahead and then he even plays a kind of weird back pass. I mean, uh, he is surrounded by th three uh, USG players and Kalajic, uh, who is playing his first European game, believe it or not, uh, is standing free in, in, in the box in the past. Uh, the ball is even played a little bit to, to his back by Kalajic. Re Regis and makes on his European debut his first goal is 2-0 for Frankfurt and everything seems like smooth sailing for them except that it wasn't Rasmus in the 31st pulls one back game remains even and uh, it seems like Frank Frankfurt just wanted to save their energy entries for the Bundesliga games and not really and wanted to just play uh, play at home and so Nielsen gets an equalizer in the 68th what probably saved Frankfurt from losing this game is that uh, Union Saint-Gerlas were then put uh, with 10 men since Van Hood uh, with a handball uh, got sent off but yeah didn't look uh, good it was actually a game with very Austrian uh, involvement as we had not only Sasha Kalajic but also Heinz Lindner not playing for Union Saint-Gilles which they didn't when last played them uh, last time uh, in the fall and then speaking of Austria Sturm Graz uh, yes, Sturm Graz were very well aware that they were had the luck of the draw because of all the opponents that they could, could have gotten, I would say Slova was definitely one of the, or if not the easiest one. 
And they win fully convincingly. So, I mean, Birith, uh, who is on loan from Ars, Ars, Ars it tells you the good connections that Sturmgratz actually have, uh, gives them early, early however, uh, Jason Rodriguez, I think he plays for Luxembourg, uh, gets an equalizer because the goalie comes out a little bit too uh, soon. And then the game was a little bit on. On the edge, it was a huge uh, chance for Sloan to actually take Lee, I think, uh, again through Rodriguez, but he waits too long. And the game then turns on a free kick uh, from Sakaria that often uh, Gruber heads towards the middle and Goran Stankovic heads into the 27th minute. That was the point when Sturm Graz completely took, took, took over. They uh, doubled their lead uh, through Kitishvili penalty, who uh, got brought down in, in, in a box. And then a slow one are really losing it. Uh, Vladimir Weiss Jr., the coach's son, and a real stalwart of the Slovak team that was so uh, good in the past decade. Uh, get sense of her absolute frustration uh, foul and then it could have been even more Kamara in stoppage type and the fourth but I think it could have been five or six at this point that's really really convincing fortunately uh, it happened also the slow one fans uh, showed that they're not a great fan fan base completely destroyed uh, whatever was there in the stadium in Graz um, everyone knew this will be a high risk game and yeah unfortunately I really don't want to say things like that, but uh, the fan base of Slovan is known to be not a very palatable one. Let's put it that way. Then, probably the almost surprise. I mean, Ajax avoided humiliation at the last second. They had a little bit more stars start, start, start starting into the game, and I think they even hit... Uh, on, uh, it was tipped over the cross by early on chance and they controlled the game. However, uh, Jans Peter Hauge, yeah, former Milan, current Frankfurt player, is again back on loan at Bode, where he actually came to rise and he moved them from, from there to, me, uh, to Milan. Uh, he sees Grombeck, uh, a young Danish striker, all the way free on, on, on the right and he basically passes it into the internet to give, I, uh, to give Bode the lead. And Ajax was shell-shocked at that moment, and yes, try as they may, it didn't look convincing. And this is again Ajax, we thought has gotten the turn around, and on the past weekend they already looked a little bit, yeah, so so not quite, and now they're, they're about to hit another, another funk. Is it because Jordan Henderson is playing now for them? I don't know. I don't want to pull it down on one man, but you know, ever since he's a starting lineup, it also doesn't look uh, quite quite right as well. Uh, but then I have seen too little of Ajax. I have, to, I, have, I have to also say, and as I said, Ajax tried to create chances, but it was very un un unconvincing. And then out of nowhere, uh, Grönbeck makes it two nil, and you really this is Ajax staring right there at elimination. And this was going almost into store stoppage. I mean, suddenly, um, uh, Ajax player is brought down in, in a box by Bortüft. It's a clear hold, and it's the last man. And so, uh, it's a red card in Van den Boomen, converts a panel penalty, and then later on, Berghuis lobs it into, into, into deep into stoppage time. Uh, and Ajax get a draw when you really thought that you had lost this game. So keeps them alive, but not looking good for Ajax at this moment. Um, on the other side, there's the case of Betis, creating very few semi-chances and then giving up a penalty that looks like nothing. But if you see the ripple, yeah, arm is up, ball hits here. It's a Petkovic penalty in the 75th minute that gives Dinamo Zagreb the win. 1-0 and that's a shocker because Betis actually tried to take this competition quite seriously because I don't think they felt quite the right to not being in the Europa League still because they were definitely not the third, uh, only the third best team in their group. So yeah, a little bit of a shocker. Can they turn it around? Betis is also kind of a little bit in the funk at the moment and uh, Dinamo Zagreb team that I, in, in, in the fall I kept, I kept on saying how bad they are and now they pulled, pulled off such a stunner. Let's see if they can bring it home. The last two games were not good ones. I mean, Maccabi Haifa wins it through Piero goal that was initially given for offside, but then um, uh, was uh, given. But there were very few chances in this match. Maccabi Haifa, though, and the game was played in Budapest. And one of the winners in Servet against Ludogorets. Yes, Servet had maybe a little bit more of the game, but honestly, it was probably the worst game of all the games yesterday, and it ends in a nil-nil. 
And so, for the ahead of the return legs, how do the favorites look? We have Lille, they overtaken Fiorentina. This because Fiorentina lost in the midweek, uh, which is not power, 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 power but you know, the tops re remain the same. Uh, Frankfurt with, with a draw. It's improved chances, but it could, could be more. So they have 62% uh, favorites. Bet is lost. They are only 30% chance of advancing, according to my model. I still think they have a shot. Ajax, outside sales, USG also going down with um, other teams like Maccabi, Tel Aviv, and Victoria Pilsen, who are in the next round, moving on. Sturm Graz, 98%, more or less in the next round. That's what one would have expected as well. The second legs will be played next week. Uh, again, will be flip flop. So Bode against Ajax is early. Kind of makes sense, I would say. Uh, and also Dinamo Zagreb against Betis. I think those are also two to look forward to. But I also also think that uh, whatever Frankfurt against USG is doing, uh, that is not done. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think USG can hurt Frankfurt. And then also a fair and Svaraj Olympics or Legia against Molde. I think those are open and maybe can produce some spectacle. Any case, that was it for me from the conference league. Yeah, not too many Georgers there. I have been trying to working on it, but you know, um, the funds at the moment go somewhere else. Let's be frank about it. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!